Call meeting to order. First item is the uh, adoption of the agenda as presented. Is that uh, with you guys? Do I have a motion to adopt? Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we'll skip public comment tonight. What? Unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, next one is approval of the draft minutes of the January 28th uh, Park and Rec Commission meeting. A chance to review it. I think that I'm not having any concerns about it. Uh, there's no issues or comments, and I'll take a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. For a motion to approve, I should say. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, item number three, the draft minutes, excuse me, item number four, the uh, draft minutes of the February 11th board meeting. I just have one question. What, what was, was there anything that came out of the public comment on the park maintenance activities? On the what? The, there was public comment on the park maintenance activities. Uh, is it about the it? normal it about the facility or was there anything specific? The normal bitching by Stephen Nessel. Was there um, on e E3 the decline and not accepting offer of dedication of land? Was there an offer for a parcel of land? Yeah, with on um, off of Las Galinas is uh, Ellen Drive, I believe, or Aaron Drive, where the church is. So there's a new development that was approved and is going to go in eventually and there's pieces in between the houses and surrounding the house that they wanted to give to the district as open space and we declined to take those pieces. Why did we decline? Just because it would be more liability. liability. Yeah. You know, so. Right. And the maintenance, it's just it does, it easier to let them maintain it. Yeah. 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 Right. The maintenance issue it's, with it interfaces was, with the private property is well, I, I much mean, more. And there wasn't a lot of open uh, open space that they were giving. It's like in between. Right. The, the way I, that I saw on the map, uh, it's just not worth it. Right, I, I would agree. I'll just call you to come and cut the weeds down. Well, <laughs> right, as always. Right. So that was that. Okay. If there's nothing else, we'll move to item number five. Okay. That's good. Oh. Um, that's good. So uh, I, I'm not sure when the last time I was here to give you guys an update on the project. It's probably been some time, but a presentation, anyways. We yeah. talked about it, but amazingly enough, I think I was at that meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. it's been a while. Probably almost a year. <laughs> oh, okay. So we've um, we've had you know we've haven't had a lot of rain. We had rain early on in the year, which actually is ideal for trail building because it gives the soil the appropriate moisture content and then we're able to work and we haven't had a lot of follow-up rain. Um, so it's, it's been pretty much perfect for trail building um, for this year. So we've got a ton done. Um, the project, we were expecting maybe two years, maybe even more to build it and we're definitely going to be within two year mark at this point, which is great. So we're hoping that it'll be completed and open to the public later this fall. Maybe early. Early, maybe early winter, but later this fall for sure. I mean in that time frame. So let me show you some photos just in some will probably be just to remind folks of where we're at. So that red circle is the Ponte Fire Road. Um, and do you mind moving the slides? I'm gonna sure, sit yeah. down there. So this piece right here, this is the Marinwood open space property. The dark green area is Marin County open space. So the project really starts from here at the Pacheco Valley pathway that parallels 101. Mm -hmm. Is that by the water tower? Uh, even further. Really? Yeah, and I have some close up 
shots of that area. So. Because when I came down to the water tower, I saw markings off, and it looks like you're yeah. heading down to yeah. We just started going the IJ. Down. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yep. So that's that's this area right in here, and I have, I have better photos to show you. But so the paved pathway that parallels 101 is the Pacheco pathway. So it could um, originate there and go if you were to go all the way up to this point, that's where it terminates with Chicken Shack Ranch. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the road, the fire road on the ridge. And that whole distance is about four miles. Um, next slide. So, you know, this was a, a project that we took several years to develop before we even put a shovel on the ground. And there was a lot of community involvement and stakeholder development. So we met with the fire department, um, with the environmental community, with the um, recreation community, so the cycling groups, um, hiking groups, equestrian groups, and developed a sense of shared goals. And so fire protection, reducing the risk of landslides and erosion, protecting sensitive natural resources, rare plants, um, and sensitive wildlife, reducing redundant roads and trails, and I have another slide to kind of point that out, and then improving the visitor experience. Yeah, and so these, we had, you know, office visits with different groups, site visits, we did all day field trips and hiked people, uh, met up there with the fire department and got their approval. So this, this is a good slide to kind of show you what the existing conditions were prior to the project. So this red hash line here was the Ponte Fire Road. And then a lot of that's actually been removed at this point. Um, this, these thinner red lines are the social trails that parallel the road. None of those were designed, they were just kind of, you know, people made them over time. And some of them were really um, severely eroded and channeling water. And they, you know, it's like, I always equate that to, you know, the tires on your Honda. They don't get better over time, they get worse. They only get worse. You know, so as these trails erode and further braid, they get worse and worse and worse. So, they were um, not in good condition. So this is the project as we designed it. So you saw that red line from here, here go away. So that was the road that we actually physically removed and, and then are in the process of constructing this trail. Now, the reason why we're not following that straight red line is because that was, um, on average about 28% grade, it was really steep. And the national trail standards are, you want to get a trail ideally around 7% grade. We weren't able to do that because of the steep topography. So we're less than 10%, which is still good. Um, and that was really one of the goals of this project was, if you were on a bicycle, um, that you would be able to you know, get on the trail here and actually climb up it. Um, most of the access points in, well, all the access points in this area are really steep roads. So now this will provide a, an access point that is very comfortable to hike. And if you're on a bicycle, you can actually climb up it that way too. And on a horse, it would also be more comfortable. Another thing with the reduced grades is that it slows people down. Um, when you have, like, I don't know if anybody's been on a little cat fire road here, mm -hmm. But it's super steep, and if you're on a bike, it's hard to go slow because you're just riding your brakes the whole time. This trail now actually has um, a lot of like undulation and reverse grades. So you'll, if you're on your bike, you'll be riding it, but you're you're kind of you're you know you're gaining speed in some areas, but then slowing down in others. And we designed it with good sight lines because safety was a big concern of ours. So from here down it connects up with the, the road. So that Ponte Fire Road is still there. Now this was important to keep because um, the fire department wanted that portion of road for emergency vehicle access. Um, this road you know, bisects this community and this community, so they still wanted to be able to have emergency vehicles access this area. And so that's, that's still in the project and that's still available. And then from that, that's the water tank right there, Bill. Mm -hmm. And then from this point, coming down, here's the old IJ building. And so this trail, this is where we're at right now. This is where the crew is. 
and they're making the connection to the one-on-one -on -one, um, Jayco pathway. Okay, when I saw it, it was not last Sunday, but the Sunday before, the crew looked like they were. you had a couple of pieces of equipment right at the bottom of that that really steep cut yeah. in the hill. Yeah. It looks like you're filling that in and bypassing it, grading around it. Oh, I think I, I you know, I have a slide of that. So okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, that, that was the most dangerous part yeah. of the whole Oh, right. <laughs> the so, whole trail. Well, there's actually two roads that go straight up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I have a picture of that. <laughs> so do the fire trucks only go to where kind of that road ends? Yeah, so the fire trucks can come access in this area. And then they still can access this area here, okay. but this there's no road that continues on either direction. So the fire trucks can get up here. Did they um, used to be able to go all the way, or was it just too they, steep anyways? No, no they, way back in the day they could. Yeah. Not recently because we had a landslide in uh, 2005. Wow. Yeah, and that cost this yeah. district money, and it also cost more county parks money. Um, so that's really, and it's a road that this district, district has not maintained. Mm -hmm. And so that was part of the synergy of this project where it felt like it kind of takes the liability off um, Marinwood, yeah. open space district, because, well, frankly, we weren't maintaining it. Mm -hmm. And, but now we've got this world-class trail instead, mm -hmm. and Marinwood didn't have to pay for it. So it's, it felt like a real win-win, I, 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 you know, I, I feel like it is, so. Um, Right. Oh, Queenstown. Oh, Queenstown is, on. is right here. So if you came all the so, way, you go to yeah. Chicken Shack and then come back around to get to it. Yeah, so if you, Queenstown is a really steep road as well. So yeah. it's right off of Miller Creek Road, and you can get up to the ridge here, and then you come across and connect to okay. Fonte. Yeah. So if you were going to drive your car to like an out-of-town hiker to come do this trail, where would they park and yeah. kind of stay? Yeah, so I have a, I have okay. a slide with the access points that I can show you. This is it. Um, okay, so this is that lower portion of the road of the trail, right? So here's 101 in the Pacheco pathway. And then there's multiple access points. Now if you go to the next slide. So this is Heatherstone here. Mm -hmm. the, again, there's that water tank that's right here. Mm -hmm. And Heatherstone is a paved road. I don't, has anybody been up it before? Yeah, but it's there, there's no access, there's a gate. No, you can, no, that's a public access point. Is it? Yeah. Well, no, it's public if you're walking. Right. No, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but, so you would drive, one access point is you, you drive, you park to the end of Heatherstone, mm -hmm. and you hike up. And so you could hike up this paved road, and then get on the trail here, and then go that way. Oh, I have it. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, because it, it looks like you're walking in somebody's private driveway. Yeah. But it's actually a public right. open space. I'm sure they don't want it to look yeah. like a public access point, but it, I'm sure that was part of the development deal. So um, you had to because, yeah, exactly yeah. because the access to the fire road that's the only way to get there to the water right. tank, and and that that fire road over at least last year anyway was almost back down to a single track too. I noticed you cleaned it up a lot. Oh, this this road? road? Yeah, right. Well, so part of this project was, this wasn't ours either. So this, this section of road, you can see it is gray. That was HOA Regency Estates. So that was, I had to get an easement on that. I had to get an easement from Marinewood CSD and and that, and that was it. But and then you know, then the rest of it was already our property. But so this portion of road was owned by HOA Regency Estates. Yeah, they didn't. It, they were responsible for maintaining it. They never maintained it. No, because yeah. it was on the backside of all their back fences. Right. So what we what the easement agreement is is um, they allowed, They gave us an easement. And we, and in turn, will maintain it mm -hmm. and allow public public access. Okay. So it, I think it worked out for them because now they oh, have to deal with it. Would have never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me go to the next slide. Okay, so another access point is Curly Fire Road. 
Um, if you live over off of Alameda de Prado, this area, this again, this is the old IJ neighborhood, you can park in this area and that is a multi-use access point. So that one you could take your horse up there, um, a bike or hike. Um, this one is just hiking and equestrian, no bikes. So they're all a little bit different. And we didn't make that determination. Some of it just came with the easement agreements. That's this easement agreement specifically states no bikes. Um, so this is Sage Grouse. This is one I'm working with that community right now on creating an easement, not for public access, but just for maintenance equipment. So we would be able to get our equipment up there to maintain this section. Um, this one's kind of funny because it really goes right by, like, in between these people's houses, so it's, it's not an access point. Next slide. Um, this one here is Red Hawk. Um, this is a hiking only public access point. And, and then finally is this one here, which is multi use. So that one, my guess is that this will be the most popular one for people Bike. on, on a bicycle because you can ride the Pacheco pathway and then connect up and onto the trail. If you lived over here and you were hiking, you know you might use this one or this one. If you're coming from the Marinwood side and you're hiking, you may use this one. There's there's also like little social trails that come off of like the end of rhinestone and things like that, that but we don't manage or maintain those. These are the official access points from the lower section. If you were coming from the top, like Bill talked about, you know, you could access it from Queenstone and then drop down the top. Um, they also had a couple of single tracks that came down, cut into Blackstone. Yeah, those are um, really, the really. They're nasty. sketchy. Really, nasty. A, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are ones that we're not going to maintain or map. No. These ones will be um, mapped. So, um, th I mean, some of them are, are not even ours. Like this is not ours. This one is not ours. But the other ones will be maintained. Any questions on the access? I do. Yeah. So the, if you were to ride your bike on the trail, you can only get on one of those multi-use access entrances. But right. then once you're on the trail, which is the blue line, right? Yeah. That's all bikes is OK. Yes. The, the blue line is just that, getting that, on. The blue line is available to everybody, uh, equestrians, bikes, and hikers. But there's only the two access points for bikes are this one okay. and that one. Yeah. Which, I mean, frankly, these neighborhoods really wanted it that way too. Um, again, it, it just kind of worked out that way. I didn't design it that way. This one, this easement already specifically states no bikes, and this one, same thing, it says hiking only. Um, so it, it just worked out that way. With that said, you know, this neighborhood did complain to me about bikes. So they were about coming down that steep paved road. So they're really happy to see this go in because now this provides a legitimate option to go out a different way. Right. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a little close up on this section now. Next slide. So if you haven't been on the Pacheco pathway, this is it. And this is where we're going to interface with the Pacheco pathway. Yep, so that's the simulation of what it's going to look like. And I was just emailing with Caltrans today. It took two years to get an agreement with Caltrans to do this. And so we're setting up a site meeting, hopefully within a couple of weeks, because we're hoping to breach that fence and, and make the connection soon. Um, but this is, you know, this is pretty much what we're expecting it to look like. Did you guys start top down? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, sort we started of. in the middle. In some, yeah. Yeah. But there was there was a method to the madness. Okay. Yeah. It's about getting how to get equipment in and whatnot. So. No, I trust you. I'm just yeah. Interested. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was so confusing to me the first time. I, it I, was frustrating. I tried to find it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so here's the road, um, the Ponty Fire Road. It, in a section that what it used to look like. And if you go to the next slide, so that's the Ponte Fire Road um, abandoned or decommissioned. And what we actually did was we took excavators, pretty big equipment, 
and we scraped along the side here and brought the soil over to this side and then regained the natural contour of the land. And why this is important is because road building, you know, these roads, they weren't designed to be, um, uh, to drain water properly. They were designed for, typically for ranch roads or logging roads, and we have these roads all over Marin, and they're, they require a lot of maintenance, and they can be problematic. So by doing this, we're reconnecting the hydrology. And the, now the water, when it rains, it'll come off the top, and it'll just sheet across, and it won't channel down the road and carry water. That's a really bad thing, and that's what caused that landslide in 2005. So, um, this photo actually is now covered with logs. Um, we've put straw uh, coil wools on it, and we're growing plants in our nursery. We're going to revegetate it. I was wondering if you're going to do that. Yeah, it's it's going to be a combination of passive and active restoration. Uh -huh. There's a really good um, native seed bank out here, so we'll let we we ripped this this ground here to let the seeds germinate, but we're also going to plant in there too. I don't know, because when you first did that, I walked all the way down that. Yeah, so, well, a lot of people did, because there was no was other way. it was so thick. Of yeah. Yeah. Powder, right? Yes. Yeah, right. Is right. that it, to make the, it more narrow, to add more plants, or...? What's that? So you're putting plants, oh, like, in this the is not. this is not going to be the access oh. anymore. So this is abandoned. Oh, right. Yeah, so that we... It won't look like that in five years. Yeah, no, we, we replaced the road with a trail. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can go to the next slide. So here's... Uh, this was uh, last week, Friday. I was out there. Um, this is pretty low down um, on the trail. And... Eric hit a pretty big uh, rock up crop. So this is a breaker, and he's just breaking through. This is a pretty sketchy section of trail where you can see yeah. the rock wall he's built for himself, and he's working his way out to connect across. Um, yeah, I mentioned before, this is not a small effort. This is like a massive effort. And this is, as far as trails go in Marin, this is the biggest game in town. Like, we, we've never built a trail this big before. Um, and nobody else in Marin is building trails this, like this. So that's why I'm super excited to have this in our backyard. I mean, it's really special. It's going to um, be amazing. Yeah. Is it you guys kind of, the Marin County Parks Department doing it, or did you have to contract out for this? No, this is all in-house. Okay. I mean, we have, I know, it's awesome. Yeah. We have an amazing crew. Mm -hmm. um, we designed it, um, and we're building it. And we've, we had a geologist look at it, because there were sections of it that we wanted to make sure we weren't creating any further landslide issues. But other than that, this is all in-house, which is great. When I worked in San Francisco, we did not have this level of expertise. We had to contract everything out. It cost three times as much, and the quality of the work wasn't as good. So this is, like the fact that we're building this with rock, it's going to last 500 years. I mean, it's, it's just, the guys that are building it, they are young, they plan on staying here, they know they're going to maintain it, so they want to do it right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great. Oh yeah, so here's a, just a photo of our nursery growing some plants for this project. Once they, um, we'll, oh, if it rains again, we'll plant them up. So. Um, if. We're also, if you were up here a year ago, there was a lot of barbed wire. Um, so there was, uh, you know, had. old ranch lines, um, so the, the, I can't remember the name of the ranch, but uh, the developer that bought this land was Ponticopolis, and that's where the name Ponte comes from. Um, and so these, these are all artifacts from the ranching days, but there was a lot of barbed wire up there, so we try to remove that, it's a danger to wildlife and people. And so, but we leave these posts because they're, you know, interesting yeah. historical markers and boundaries. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see we pulled out miles of barbed wire. Okay, so this is, I think, the slide that you were talking about, Bill, right? Mm -hmm. So this is... Uh, the cut is right up. This is sage grouse here going mm -hmm. down, and like rhinestone is this way. Mm -hmm. And so we... This has been called the $100 ch challenge at Hornet County Parks for years because it's so steep. Can you drive up it? Um, and, you know, at one point it was drivable. 
because there was a road here, and then that eroded out so badly that they started another road here. And, but so, they are so incredibly steep. I, I mean, I do a lot of off-roading. I would never attempt to drive. Well, that. you couldn't. You could not drive up that. Yeah, all. yeah. Right. And we, when we took the kids down, it, we pretend we were doing moguls skiing. Right. We'd right. be jumping from one to the next, all the way down. It was a lot of fun. But so was, from here, coming this way, that's the road. And then here going up is that's the removal of the road in all trail. I think the next slide shows the trail. Yeah, so this is the same spot, mm -hmm. right? So here's this was again, this was last week. Wow. Um, you can see that the, these are massive boulders, and those are for the building this wall right here to construct the trail across. So again, this is probably 50% grade. This is incredibly steep. You would never design a trail or even a road that steep for that matter. So what we're doing is we're, we're going to remove these roads. The trail will cut across here, wrap around, and then come back this way, and it'll be a much gentler grade. Okay. Yeah. So this is That's standing yeah. at the top, looking down, to kind of give you a sense of the. the Do you take these pictures this week? Friday. Friday. Uh -huh. So how yeah, are you going to? Yeah, it looks different than last week. Yeah. Yeah. How are we gonna fix this? Yeah. It's it's not gonna be. Do you fill a, it in? Or? It's not gonna be a race. Okay. It's what we want to do. The most important thing is disconnect it hydrologically. We don't want it to keep draining water. Um, we want to revegetate it. So we've ripped it, and we'll hope you know keep people off it, let plants regenerate, and don't allow the water to go down that that way. But it's not gonna be repaired. That soil is gone. You know, once it erodes out, like I said, like your tires, they don't burn, you tread, you can't. We could import soil, but that's expensive, and then you potentially import non-native seeds and weeds, and you don't want to do that either, so. This was, um, this was an older photo. This was maybe four or five months ago. This is a wall um, that was built on the upper section of the trail. And this rock, when you go hike this, and you'll see this rock face here. Just know that that rock goes all the way through to the back. This, this is a, another huge effort. It's one of the bigger walls we've ever built. Um, and it looks much nicer now. It started to grow, grow in, and it, the, it's been finished over a little bit. So it's, but it's awesome, because you, you kind of pop out of the Madrone Forest here, and then when you're standing over here, you have this 180 degree view. Have you been on it? No, I just can yeah. kind of imagine it. Yeah, really cool. it's really, really beautiful. You can see Mount Tam and, and the whole Greenwood area. Um, this is a, a section of the trail that has a little more finished look to it. And you know, we we're really trying to be thoughtful about having the trail fit in with the landscape. So we really tried to weave in and out of trees. We didn't want to you know, bulldoze um, the forest. And this is a beautiful. This goes through a beautiful madrone forest, and this is an upper section that has, a, you know, just a nice shot of the sinuosity of it. Um, we we've had several volunteer events out here. Uh, this was um, a couple weeks ago. We had over seventy five people, a lot of kids. Um, all the mountain biking teams are really excited about this project from Miller Creek School and then even down as far as Mill Valley. Um, so we had a lot of people come out and help do the finish work. We had shirts made up and, um, and every time somebody comes and volunteers, we, we give them a shirt and lunch. And so it's, it's been really exciting to, to kind of see the community excited about the project. Uh, yeah, it's just, we've had lots of, I think we've had four volunteer events. We have another one coming up in two weeks, and, and we'll have many more throughout the, the summer. That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank so you can you guys. hike the whole thing right now while you're working on it? Or? So there's, I think there's mostly connectivity at this point. There's a couple of gaps. Let me find them out. Um, 
I'm trying to think. This part isn't done mm -hmm. right here. Maybe another week or so, and that'll be. And that's just a rough cut. Yeah. It's not a finished cut. Now this is all done. This is done. There's a this that that picture where the, the equipment was breaking the rock. Yeah. Like that that needs work still. That's going to take a while. And there's a little gap up here, but mostly it's all connected now, which is really nice. Well, you don't have it like locked off or anything. Or you know, we we did. We okay. have signs that say you know this area is closed. Mm -hmm. Of course, nobody pays attention to that. Um, but but now at least it's mostly connected where you can you can access it. So, did, did you put the new post in at the end of Queenstone at the T that goes Chicken Ranch that yeah. way? Yeah. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Queenstone. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that that looked new? Yeah. I was really happy to see something like that because the old signs were just <laughs> right tiny right little things. Right. We're, and this will have you know those wayfinding posts yeah. at, at every intersection. We're doing that across our, our land at this point, so. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. And I'm really looking forward to that when it cuts into Chicken Ranch. Yeah, when, it, when it's fully connected. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, um, it's really exciting. I, I may have said this to you before. I could work at Marine County Parks for another 20 years, and I probably won't get the opportunity to do something like this. Just kind of all the stars lined up for this project, so it's... The way it connects to the paved pathway, and we were able to, the fire department typically doesn't want to get rid of access. Mm -hmm. um, they, they told me they would never put anybody on that ridge, it was too dangerous. So they're like, and it's not maintained, and so like, sure, go ahead. That doesn't happen often at all. So it, it just worked out um, that it was the perfect candidate for this type of project. So the only access for the fire is Queenstone, and then on the Novato side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but they still can access the lower section. Um, yeah, but they can't go far. No, but they. What they said was that if there was ever a catastrophic fire in this area, mm -hmm. they would use um, helicopters. Oh yeah. You know, and they, and they would bring bull, bulldozers up there too, but they wouldn't be putting people on that line on that It's ridge. too steep yeah. and it's too crowded with yeah. the vegetation. So. Yeah. Cool. Our our website, we're in County Parks, and um, you know I could I could provide like a link for uh, Marin Woods website if you think that would be yeah, useful yeah. as well. That would be pretty good. For yeah, them. a lot of people would go on that website mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, so I can I can yeah. give you a link. Yeah, we missed the last one. The youngest is on the mountain bike team. Oh, is he? I was like, oh yeah. So I, oh. I want to go. <laughs> oh really? Oh, we write it down. Yeah. Oh, but he knows about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The team is very excited. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. I reached out to those guys and, and you know when that's we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. No, that's that's good. Yeah. It'll be nice to get them on that one and off of other. Right. <laughs> well, right. And so that's a big part of it for us is we try and provide legitimate, legal, sustainable, safe access for mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. We don't want them. In other areas. Um, one thing I didn't talk about in this part of this project, there's a trail that drops down here, and it's a really steep trail. It's not a legal trail. That's going to be closed in conjunction with this. So it's kind of our way. It's like, look, we want to provide this access, but we're gonna we're gonna close other areas. And because we are now providing this to you, we expect you to you know comply with it. Yeah. And so it, we're trying to reduce some of these illegal social trails and provide, you know, legitimate access. So, it's, um, so far, it's worked out very well. Really interesting to hear all the things that go into building the trail. Mm -hmm. so thank you for bringing this up. Yeah. It's so neat to learn all that. It's um, it's more involved than you might think at first. I mean, all the, the you know to coordinate with the, the Native mm -hmm. American tribes with mm -hmm. the um, vegetation the wildlife, yeah. the geology, the neighbors, <laughs> you know, it's like the fire department, like there, there's a lot of people to coordinate with and it, it takes <clears throat> it takes years to get them all to agree on a project. The, um, the project I'm working on, well I just got approval to move forward with is, is at Rush Creek Preserve mm -hmm. up in Novato and 
same thing. It took about two years to kind of get everything to line up and we, we we're good now and so now we're going to start developing the project and hopefully break ground next year. But I was working on that one for about two years to, to get everybody to agree. So it takes time. Yeah. It's like the shed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the public process, right? Oh my God. Everybody has an oh opinion. My God. Slightly different. Did you guys help with the search and rescue at all? Like, does one of the yeah. parks help with that yeah. kind of stuff? With the... Yeah, we did. Some of our rangers, well, a lot of our rangers were out there. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Actually, I think we, probably saw food. we probably did. Yeah. We, um, <laughs> we got a call. One, one of the rangers called me and asked if we could access the field of day. Mm -hmm. Wildlife cameras. That was the the cameras put up there for the mm -hmm. mountain lions yeah. on Ringwood property, and so I contacted Field Day and they sent somebody up and we got the the camera data to help guide the search. Oh, wow. So they found the guy sooner because they knew he didn't go this way, he didn't go that way because he didn't trigger any of the cameras. I think wasn't he on Blackstone Canyon Trail? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and. That trail up on top where it cuts into Queenstone, you're talking about narrow trail that water erodes it like crazy. Oh, yeah. To begin that trail up at top of Queenstone to go down Blackstone is sketchy as hell for yeah. the first hundred yards or so. Right. Because of that, because of the water erosion. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, thanks, John. That's great. Thank you. Um, item number six, I guess we are going to defer. I uh, did go out to Creekside, and so I, I, I noted a couple things. I guess I could tell you. You could yeah. pass it on to yeah. the other maintenance guys. Uh, they're most likely aware of it as well. So, but I did notice that uh, spring toy in the playground. I guess it's just come loose from the concrete in the mm -hmm. ground. It's this motorcycle and it's oh, yeah. banging over. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's, I mean, it's, it's wobbly. So it's, a, it's, a, there's a little bit of liability there to just leave it like that. Um, one that maybe is just a little picky. I noticed in the sand area. Oh, yeah. Oh, you saw it as well, huh? Yeah. Um, if they could take a minute just to rake out that sand, to rake the uh, uh, live oak leaves out of it, mm -hmm. because they're, they're so pointy and sticky that yeah, they hurt. <laughs> it's hard to have fun playing in sand when you keep poking yourself in your fingers. The third thing I noticed that the bike rack was sitting back behind a bench right at the edge of the bank. And it wasn't anchored, so I don't see a lot of vandalism up there. But it'd be real easy just to go whoop and just watch it roll down the bank. So I think to move it and maybe anchor it somewhere else, or something. Yeah. And then the last thing I noticed is that live oak is it seems to be the decline seems to be accelerating. I think. They were gonna have at some point soon, so I'm go look at it and see. There's some. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I mean, it's almost starting to appear dead. Like it's got sudden oak death. Mm -hmm. But that's, 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 that's the big one. Yeah, that yeah. big one. I mean, yeah, it's just like there's very yeah. several. There's several it's dead so limbs in it now, and even all the epicormic flush growth. Half of that is dying out. But, um, I mean, there's still some solid lumber in there. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, 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 I, the coolest thing I saw was on one side there's the decay at the base, and then up there's a, where the branches split, there's some, a decay pocket in there. But you could actually stretch into that decay and underneath it see this beautiful oak lumber. I mean, it was just this bright yellow, straight grain. You can see all the you know, all, all the, oh, I can't think of the word, but the pores for the different cells and mm -hmm. stuff. 
So I think it's the tree is still sound. I don't think it's going to collapse, although some of those limbs could start to go. But yeah, it seems like it. I haven't seen it in a while, but it seems like it's going quicker than it was. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's got some time. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mention that I also noticed that it looked like the, um, the fall leaf drop from last year hadn't been sort of cold out yet. Mm -hmm. So it just looked like the vegetation around the property maybe hadn't been visited for a while. So it probably needs uh, just a clean up of the fall leaf drop, particularly around the tennis courts and leaves are kind of piling up into the playground. There's these trees, they have these big leaves like this. Um, and then I just noticed it look, looks like the just in general, the plants need a, just a quick bounce over, like there's, you know, new baby oak trees growing out of the grass and out of the bunch grass, mm -hmm. and just to go through and kind of light kind of trimming and maintenance of the vegetation. Anything to add? No, I don't. I actually didn't get out there because I didn't think we were going to be talking about it. No, well, I went out there before yeah. I knew we weren't going to talk about it. Oh, it's because. <laughs> The idea that he would do a presentation at the next meeting or whenever he comes. Yeah, to and I think, I think Eric so. said they'll just have two kind of presentations. And right. Is, is he coming? Is he taking a couple months off or? Luke. Yeah. Um. Uh, no, he's he's even back kind of part time right now. Oh, um, okay. He is going for a week in March. Hopefully not the commission. Oh, okay. Otherwise, we'll see him. Um. But yeah, so he's coming back part time at this point. A few days a week. Okay, well, if we uh, move on to item number seven, uh, the Recreation Park Maintenance Activity Report. Um, Robin gave this. I guess you could just review it. I don't know if there's any highlights on there you want to bring out. Yeah, just um, last week was midwinter break camp. It went well. Um, we have our annual wine tasting event this Saturday. Let's see everyone there. And pool is getting back up into operation next week uh, water devils start so and also next week camp registration opens up so it's going to be busy <laughs> spring is now here so yeah and then yeah parks uh crew has been busy doing a lot of stuff which they're all kind of listed there but yeah any uh, yeah. questions or comments on the uh, maintenance this is great looks really good Um, I guess I have number eight, then, uh, any items of interest or requests for future agenda items? Uh, I have nothing. Could I? Um, do we have, what's the next facility spotlight? Creekside was this one. What's the next one? The main park. Main park? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll likely have both of those next month. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add tonight? Okay. Motion to That's adjourn. Good. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. All right. Thank you very much.